Brian QLA Rose is on his way. I hear through the, uh, the um, cyberspace, and he posted the thing last night or yesterday that uh, he was coming up and uh, he would be um, posting stuff to um, Instagram or wherever he posts them on the hour. And um, the, uh, he said he wouldn't be dressed like he is dressed when he posted that in his uh, default uniform of a t-shirt and a, a pair of jeans, although um, he looked, appeared to have shoes on, so he wasn't trying to grip the ground for a magnetic uh, reverence or anything. So he'll be up here late uh, in the afternoon. And he said that he was looking forward to it, but also looking forward to hooking up with two of his classmates who went through the seminar with him. One, anybody else? No. Okay, uh, so he'll be there, and uh, so we're going to have the um, uh, the ceremony, etc. And he's actually going to be here three days, interviewing me and, and uh, filming, etc. Um, we're going to have uh, the group. What case is this you're going to describe? Disney. Okay, Disney. Pixar. Okay, so we're going to have a special treat. One group has asked to do the um, Pixar uh, development case study. It's out of uh, is it Harvard or Stanford? out of Harvard. As I said yesterday, for those of you that keep on asking me for case studies for 10 years, all you got to do is type in, send your credit card, and you can buy all the fucking case studies you want from Harvard and all the best schools. Um, the, uh, what the end result you may come away with may not be the end result um, that uh, we teach here, but it is uh, the facts. Uh, clearly outlined in the Pixar case. Disney Pixar is one of the most famous case studies in the last 20 years, thereabouts. And um, so um, I'm not going to give you the background, and, but you know it had to do with uh, Steve Jobs and um, the then CEO of Disney, etc. And it's pretty, uh, pretty famous. And um, the, um, uh, any questions before they start their presentation? Okay, guys, it's all yours. Um, our group is going to be reviewing the, the Pixar acquisition by Disney to acquire or not to acquire. Okay, uh, I think in this case, it comes down to the key terms at the end. You know, yesterday when we, um, Mr. Pena was talking about <coughs> acquisition of your targets. You know, in this case, we think that you name your price and I dictate the terms. That's how it should be, the way um, the terrain is uh, set out here. Uh, the difference between all of us here and Disney is that Disney has deep pockets. I mean, they can do what they want. They, you know, as long as the price uh, is set by the other term, you know, as long as we can set the terms, you know, things can work out in this situation. And how we're going to do the retention mechanism. Disney and Pixar. Disney, um, the last uh, animated uh, movie that Disney have uh, created uh, that was of any value was actually The Lion King. After that, Dinosaur was a big flop in the box office. Uh, Pixar created $3.5 billion, contributed about 10% of revenue for Disney and 60% of total operating income. You know, Disney have projected that any kind of sequel that will, that will be created from uh, the movies will generate up to 30 to 90% more than uh, revenue than the original movies that was created. Pixar is a software and animation 3D movie. They both uh, <coughs> shared this computer animated production system. Uh, the, the tech is actually owned by Disney. Pixar, due to the deal, um, actually has earned only $56 million in revenue of the total that uh, Toy Story generated, which is um, $350 million. I'm going to turn this over to Jay. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning, gents. G good morning, Mr. Pennant. <laughs> 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 Just as an aside, I told them a story the true story about me making a presentation at Baring Brothers many years ago. And um, when Lord Barry Nick put me in the elevator, uh, he said, I learned to stutter. 
because he was uh, intimating that I was too slick and my answers were too fast. And so when I came back months later to make another presentation, I started out by going, Lord Baring, Mr. Gunn, uh, just to, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, teasing them. But anyway, go ahead. Guys, I have two, two points I'd like to make. And the first one is me just asking um, my right hand man, Joe, our, our CEO, um, the decision maker, our leader, uh, a few questions. Joe, yesterday, when um, after we had, after we all, you know, had drinks off after dinner, how long did it take us after the movie to decide that we need to meet up and look at our case? 10 seconds. How long did it take us to arrange our group to go and do that? A minute and a half. Would you agree with Edie? Um, yeah. Uh, how long did it take us, though, to, to look through it and all come to a conclusion, an agreement, though? Oh, looking at the case deal itself um, and coming to a conclusion, probably about 45 minutes to about an hour. And then we could also agree on pretty quickly who needs to present? Yes. The second point that I wanted to get to, and it's going to be a long-winded one, and I appreciate it if no one asked questions till the end, um, unless there was a reason for you to ask that may affect the rest of the, the presentation, or you could write notes and just ask us at the end. Um, yesterday, you may or may not have realized that one of the people, uh, one of the staff here at Guthrie Castle, wasn't present in the evening. Um, this individual had to go to a funeral. Uh, a very... Uh, possibly emotional event, this person didn't show any sign of, of having a, a situation. This morning, um, when I was up, I bumped into the same person we had a chat uh, to, uh, to get to, to try and cut this quickly. Um, I went to a similar event not so long ago with somebody that I cared about. I, I was adopted, uh, well, could have been adopted, my mom wasn't the woman to look after me, I grew up with my grandparents. My grandmother, from the day I was, well, from the, the moment I can remember her, I always knew that one day she's going to die, and in, in essence, prepared myself for when she died. When she died, I didn't cry. No one knew it. That night, I had work. We had to go on holiday the next morning. My girlfriend and I had to make sure that we stayed. For two days, I had to finish that fucking work, and she is there for me still. Um, I've never cried about it until this morning. Um, and... The truth is, why I cried is I remembered a Pixar movie with my grandparents. The first, the first drive-in I went to, I saw Toy Story. And the point I'm going to get to on this is, these guys have passion for what they do, and they know how to bring out emotions in people. It brought up my emotions in me. These guys love what they do, um, and these two companies need to come together and merge because one has beautiful historic data of creating movies, and it's all about storytelling and, and being able to get people happy, like Mr. Pena earlier, crying. They did that early, but they started to lose their edge. And now Pixar have come out of the middle of nowhere in a whole new set of technology, and our, our John Lasseter representing the, one of the. So long before you all knew Steve Jobs, 1975 is when Pixar really started to understand and develop what they were doing. But they knew how to touch people's fucking heartstrings. And that, for me, that's the most important thing. These guys need to merge because they, now, if we look at when they started until, until well, the combination of them is going to be the biggest group. They have no more monopolies. They can take out all the other fucks who are doing movies, and yes, they're good, but they, now they have a history of almost 100 years. You tell me any other animation studio that's doing the same. And animation only sort of came in last century. Well, the... I could go into detail, but I'd rather hand you over to our experienced CFO, Kiara Peng. Thank you. Well, um, I would have to say that as the CFO of this company, um, Jay's speech had quite uh, wavered my decision in, in on how I want to vote. As a numbers person, uh, initially when I was looking at this acquisition, it doesn't, it just didn't make sense for me as a public company CFO. Uh, the, first of all, uh, you know, I, I imagine there will be a major culture clash between the two companies. On top of that, based on where Pixar is being valued today, we will have to pay a premium between 66.5 uh, to $7.5 billion. And they 
have, they are currently at a price to earnings ratio of 46. That means me as a public company whose stock price is dropping right now have to absorb a company at a PE ratio that's much lower than mine. I don't see any market value in doing that. Um, on top of that, uh, we are going to potentially, if we were to go through the acquisition, we'll have to absorb their stock at 2.3 to 1. I've never done something like this. On the other hand, <clears throat> thanks Jade. Um, on the other hand, I'd like to step outside of my box as a financial person and look at the strategic value of this acquisition. Besides the fact that Pixar is a leading innovative company, I can see the future of how this will affect our revenue and profit. I can see how, even though we may have to absorb this company at a premium, we will be able to resolve the culture clash by following our CEO Joe's reign that we should dictate the terms. And that will include a very strict culture and talent retention mechanism. We will require the chief technology officer and chief creative director to stay on for at least five years with five successful movies grossing at least 500 million worldwide. And besides that, we also definitely see the value in synergy that we already have. And we see the future growth and domination value for these two companies. Disney, a company that has 100 years of experience in the movie industry, and Pixar, the up-and-coming 3D movie top star. We believe in this deal, and we'd like to step up and buy the bullet, buy this company at 50 multiple of their avatar, where we see our revenue and profit growth potentially have to go something like this. We have deep pockets. I don't like it when Joe says that to our, uh, to our um, clients and vendors, but we do. And we are ready to wait this curve out. Thank you. Good job, guys. I mean, actually, great job. The, um, this is uh, uh, as good as uh, if they, uh, any B-School analysis, uh, and in a lot of ways, uh, better than any B-School analysis. And uh, they didn't have to spend $250,000 and two years of their fucking life jerking off, having a good time, hopefully, uh, at some um, high top quality uh, business school. Now that's a very professional presentation, not unlike you will see at the big companies, okay? I've taught you how to do it uh, short and dirty, down and dirty uh, uh, method, but this is uh, the right answer. It's not dissimilar to the real answer that they came up with. Um, and um, the uh, YouTube, you've seen one like a B school, uh, and uh, the, the, it, it, was, it was very well done, very professional. Any questions from the kids? Or to the kids, I should say. Come on, Vincent. No, no questions? Okay. Um, we'll stop, um, we'll, we'll talk to you later, uh, YouTube.